Todd from Sideshow Effects once again and in this video I'm going to go over the installation and just a brief navigation of our new Final Cut Pro for the Screen Deck XL and MK devices and this version uses Command Post to drive all the actions. Now in our pack we have the original versions of this uh, of these profiles if you look in the english section here you can see divided into mk you have a label and non-label and excel for label and non-labeled and you also have the same for the german these are unchanged in version 3 the change in version 3 is we have added a command post version to this and in the command post folder you are you will see a guide specifically for installing and navigating the command post version of this profile. So I'm going to demonstrate using an Excel device. If you have an MK device, the 15 key, you can follow along. The, the principles are pretty much the same. Uh, there are some differences between the profiles. Some of the pages and some of the actions are not available on the MK due to a limitation of the amount of keys. So the first thing you want to do is use this video as a visual reference guide for the installation and navigation steps. It is always advisable to use the PDF that is in the pack itself because it will have the most up-to-date and relevant information over this video. So if there are any inconsistencies between what you see in the PDF and what you see in this video, refer to the PDF first. So the first thing you're going to want to do, if you do not have it already, you want to download the Command Post software. And we have provided the link below, in the description below, and also in your pack. So you would go to the commandpost.io and you would download it here. After downloading, you likely see this pop-up. You want to allow this. And you should see the command post icon show up on your menu bar at the top here. Now we're going to open this up by clicking on this and we're going to go to control surfaces and go to stream deck. And this will open our window. Let's move this to the side here. And this will be what you're presented with, the main stream deck uh, control surface window. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to check these boxes for enable Stream Deck support, automatically switch applications, automatically apply the icon from action. And we can select this one for now, but when you're running it normally and when you're working with Final Cut, you will need to deselect this one in order for it to appear when you're working with Final Cut. But we can turn it on now because it will show on our device while we're working with it here. So the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have got your device selected. So in this case, I'm going to load it onto my Stream Deck XL device. Keep yourself on Unit 1. And you're going to select the Final Cut Pro application. You can see it's, there are some pre-built applications already here. Final Cut Pro will be among them. So you want to make sure that you load the Final Cut. Not 100% necessary as when you import the profile it it should know exactly what it's being applied to but just to keep everything simple you can select the Final Cut Pro. Uh, the bank doesn't really matter we can go down to bank one it doesn't matter what bank you're on. So from this point you're then going to go to import settings and you want to select replace if you have nothing already built for Final Cut. If you've already installed the MK version and you want to install the XL version as well, which you can do, then you would select Merge and it won't overwrite the MK version. But for now we're going to select Replace. It's going to direct us where the file is that we want to load in. We'll go to our download from Sideshow FX, go into the Command Post folder, into the Profiles, and it is an XL device. And this is the file that we're going to load in, so we can just double click that. It will load in and it loads it into our command post software. Now one thing that needs to be mentioned is if you have the Stream Deck software running, like I do here, you'll need to quit it. You'll go up to the menu bar here and you'll say quit Stream Deck. The reason is the command post software 
cannot take control of your Stream Deck device if the official Stream Deck software is running. Once you quit the Stream Deck software, Command Post can take over of your device and our profiles will then show up and are able to be used. So if you're working in a different program, let's say you do some work in DaVinci Resolve, for example, and you're using one of our packs with the Stream Deck and you want to switch to our Command Post version of Final Cut, you'll need to quit Stream Deck first and then you'll be able to access our Command Post version of our profile. Now the advantage of the Command Post version of our profile versus the regular is Command Post version uses API actions, not hotkey actions. So therefore that means you can use any keyboard language layout that you choose. If you're using a German keyboard layout or French keyboard layout, this profile will work for you as long as you're using the English language version of Final Cut Pro. The other advantage, of course, is you get a lot more functionality from our command post version. You can control the transform, the crop, the distort, and all the color controls, which you can't with our regular version because those are actions that you cannot tie a hotkey to. But with this command post version, that's all available to you. I'm going to show you that now. And so we've populated 50 banks, which are 50 pages of commands. And we're going to briefly go over most of them. And uh, you can go through the menu system and discover them for yourself as well. Now, because you've got preview selected here, it should appear on your device. And this is the main page you're presented with now. We've got eight folders along with uh, the tools that are also available to you on the main page. Now you'll find with the preview selected that we're just previewing the page that's live on command post. It is not uh, responsive until we get to Final Cut. So let's do that now. We're going to deselect the preview and this is the way you will normally have it working and you'll see it disappears off of your device. But when we switch to Final Cut, you'll see it appears again and now we have the profile is live and in each one of these I can go in to each one of these folders so select editing for example we can get in here and we have one two three pages of editing functions and we can go back and these are also subfolders for the different categories you can see along the bottom here multicam also has some multicam functions as well as dedicated pages for switch and cut switch. We have all of our trim functions here. We can do nudges. If we get into playback navigation, we see a page here and we have play rates. Now if we go into effects, we have effect related commands. And if we go to transform here, I'm going to demonstrate how this transform actually works. So selecting the video inspector and having a clip selected, by pressing and holding these keys we can affect the different parameters. Now the first here are we can increase or decrease the opacity of our clip and we can reset that with this reset button uh, underneath. This affects the position X to the left and to the right and the position Y up and down. This will affect our rotation. This is our uniform scale. This is our X scale. I'll use my other hand here for the Y scale. And these can all be reset with our reset keys. We also have the ability to change our anchor point left and right and up and down with these keys so we can reset those. Now similarly we can go to crop and we're able to crop the left side in and out. Now these are fine adjustments so this is left, right, top, bottom and you can make these adjustments you saw this goes one pixel at a time. If we select the ones with the darker orange arrows, these are course adjustments, so it, they will go 10 pixels at a time. So this is, will be adjusting 
the bottom of uh, the bottom crop up and down, but in increments of ten instead of one. And once again, we can reset all these. Distort works the same way. We can distort our X. Distort the Y for the bottom left and reset those. Now there is no fine or coarse on here because we need all the space for each of the corners. So these are all fine adjustments. We have a page of blend modes. We also have titles featured. Now one thing you'll notice with titles here, these are, these are just static keys. If we go into the command post software, let's just go back here and let's select, I happen to know that it's on bank 13 is where our titles are. You can see that they animate here within the command post software. These are how they're designed. Well, currently, uh, Command Post does not have the ability to have animated gra uh, graphics play through on the Stream Deck. But we've built them this way because uh, th this will be a feature that's coming soon. So they're already uh, prepared and, and ready so that when that update comes in Command Post, these will be animating this way on your device. And one other thing you'll notice, since I went out to Command Post and then went back into Final Cut, it has taken me back to the main page of Final Cut. That is how the software is built. It automatically goes back to the main page. It would be nice if it would go back to the page we were last on, but currently that's not how it's working. So to finish up effects, we can see we have generators, basic color effects, blur distortion, light masks and keying, stylized functions, looks, and wipes that we can use. And they can all be applied at the press of a button. Back to our main page, we'll go into color here. Now these color controls will allow us to control all aspects of the color parameters. And I'll demonstrate that. Now, along the top here, these will open specific control pages for different color controllers. Along the top, these are our color wheels. So for the global, which is the master, the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Uh, controls for color board, saturation exposure board, and color adjustments. I'll we'll go through each one of these. So if we go into master, or global, along the top here we can quickly jump to the other color wheels if we want to jump back and forth for our adjustments. The one that's lit up in yellow is the one we're currently on. So you can see this page tells us that we're on the global color control. So let's open up our color wheels here for this clip. And we can see by pressing and holding our temperature, we're able to adjust this value. Actually, let me just pop out. I'm going to put up my scopes for a second here. You'll be able to see here. And now I'll go back into global. Now we can see the effect of our temperature. We can adjust our tint. You can see it's easier to see with our scopes moving and we can adjust our hue and we can reset those with these keys here now adjusting this will give us the saturation of our global you can see the global wheel moving now if we turn down or unhide the global controls you can also see us making the change here and if we go over to this side we can adjust the brightness And the red, green, blue can also be adjusted. And you can see those values changing as well. The shadows, midtones, and highlights all are built the same way. Just by adjusting, you can see our shadows, red, are moving. Same thing with midtones, highlights. Those will make the adjustments in the appropriate color wheel. Now if we press on color board, this brings us up the color board controls. The first set of four allow us to control the global, and then we control the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. Just by selecting any of these, you can see we're moving 
left and right, up and down, we can make our adjustments this way. You may find it more intuitive and easier to use the mouse for these sort of sections, so I can you know, move the mouse where I want a lot quicker, but if I then want to dial it in on a more fine level, I can then make my adjustments here. Same thing with saturation and exposure. You can see that we have control over our global values and our black, mid, and highlights. That was for the first four in the section. Second four, well, actually eight up and down. Uh, the second eight here are for exposure. So if I start adjusting exposure, you can see the pane switch from saturation to exposure. And I can make my adjustments there. Last one we have here is color adjustments. I can adjust my exposure, contrast, brightness, our highlights, black point, and shadows. We don't have resets on here because there isn't enough space because we also have control over the color section, which is our saturation. Highlight warmth, highlight tint, the midtones warmth, midtones tint, highlight warmth, highlight tint, and we can also reduce or increase the mix of the effect. So in addition, you have a number of color related hotkey commands that are available on this page. View gives you a, a few pages of view related commands. Windows, same thing, window commands, audio related commands, as well as page of audio effects, a couple pages of audio effects that you can apply at the press of a button. And general, which helps you with media management, that sort of thing. Just general hotkey commands to help you with your organization and your file management. So that's the command post version of our Stream Deck XL pack. So that's it. That's everything you need to know. You're up and running. As long as you keep your Stream Deck software off, this will work for you. You can relaunch Stream Deck software anytime and work in your other programs. But if you're going to come back to Final Cut and our Command Post versions profile, just remember to quit the Stream Deck software. And that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching and we'll talk to you soon.